Imagine an electric car that never, ever needs to be plugged in. It draws power from the very air around it. This isn't science fiction. This is the claimed invention of Maxwell Chikambutso from Zimbabwe, and it's causing a major stir on the world stage. Reports suggest that Japan, a global technological titan, is desperate to license it. Why would a country synonymous with innovation seek out a relatively unknown inventor from Africa? The answer to that question is a thrilling tale of potential, controversy, and a high-stakes race for the future of energy. Let's begin with the man at the center of this storm. Maxwell Chikambutso is a self-taught engineer and the founder of Seth Holdings Inc. He emerges from a nation facing profound economic challenges. Yet, he claims to have built a series of technologies that defy conventional physics. His most famous invention is the so-called green power generator. This device, he asserts, produces more energy than it consumes. It allegedly achieves this through a system of magnets and radio frequencies. If true, this would be a perpetual motion machine. It would violate the fundamental law of conservation of energy. Physicists worldwide dismiss such a possibility as impossible. Energy cannot be created from nothing. It can only be converted from one form to another. Then came his piece de resistance, an electric vehicle. This isn't just any EV. He calls it a radio frequency powered electric vehicle. The prototype is a converted SUV, a Toyota RAV4. Its most shocking feature is the absence of a charging port. Chikambutso claims it is powered by a receiver that harvests ambient radio waves. These are the invisible signals that fill our atmosphere. They come from radio stations, television towers, cell phone networks, and Wi Fi routers. His vehicle supposedly captures this ambient electromagnetic energy. It then converts it into electrical current to power the motor. He has demonstrated the car driving on a test track. Skeptics, however, are legion and vocal. They propose much simpler explanations. The car could contain a hidden, conventional battery. The demonstrations could be an elaborate hoax. Without independent, verifiable testing, the claims remain just that claims. The scientific community places his inventions in the too-good-to-be-true category. This is where the plot thickens dramatically. Enter Japan, a nation that lives and breathes technological advancement. It is the home of Toyota, Honda, Nissan, and Panasonic. These are companies that have defined the modern automotive and battery industries. Yet, Japan finds itself in a precarious position regarding its energy future. To understand why, we must look at Japan's unique and vulnerable geography. Japan is an island nation with virtually no domestic fossil fuel reserves. For decades, it relied heavily on imported oil, coal, and natural gas. This made its economy extremely sensitive to global price shocks. Then, in 2011, the Great East Japan earthquake and the subsequent Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster changed everything. The public turned fiercely against nuclear power. Nearly all of Japan's nuclear reactors were shut down for years. This forced the country to become even more reliant on expensive imported liquefied natural gas and coal. Its energy self-sufficiency rate plummeted. Energy security became a national obsession. This vulnerability creates a powerful incentive to find a game-changing solution. A technology that could tap into a limitless, ambient power source would be a holy grail. It would solve Japan's energy crisis overnight. It would free the nation from the volatility of global energy markets. This is the desperate need that Maxwell Chikambutso's invention appears to address. But Japan's interest isn't just born out of desperation, it's also a strategic calculation. The global race for electric vehicle dominance is intensifying. China has built an overwhelming lead in battery production and supply chains. It controls a significant portion of the world's lithium mining and refining. This gives China a formidable geopolitical advantage. For Japan, competing in a battery-centric EV future means playing a game where China holds most of the cards. It's an uphill and expensive battle. A technology that bypasses the need for massive lithium-ion batteries would be a strategic masterstroke. It would completely reset the playing field. Imagine an EV with no heavy, expensive battery pack to manufacture. 
No reliance on scarce materials like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. No multi-hour charging stops. No strain on the national electrical grid from millions of cars plugging in at once. This is the revolutionary potential that Japan sees in Chikambutso's RF-powered car. It's not just an incremental improvement, it's a paradigm shift. However, the path to licensing this technology is a minefield of controversy. The biggest obstacle is the fundamental question of whether it even works as advertised. No peer-reviewed papers have been published on the technology. No independent laboratory has been allowed to rigorously test the vehicle or the generator. The principle of harvesting energy from ambient radio frequencies is itself real. It's a concept known as RF energy harvesting, but the amount of energy available in the ambient air is minuscule. It's enough to power tiny devices like wireless sensors, RFID tags, or maybe a wristwatch. Powering a multi-ton vehicle requiring tens of kilowatts of energy is an entirely different matter. The radio waves in our environment are incredibly weak. To power a car, you would need to be parked directly next to an enormously powerful transmitter. Even then, the efficiency of conversion would be a massive hurdle. For mainstream science, the idea of an RF-powered car driving freely around a city is implausible. This leads to two stark possibilities. The first is that Maxwell Chikambutso is one of the greatest geniuses in human history. He has discovered a new physical principle that has eluded all of our top scientists. The second is that the invention is a sophisticated illusion. The truth likely lies somewhere in a gray area, but the burden of proof remains immense. Beyond the science, there are serious legal and political clouds. Chikambutso has faced legal trouble in his home country. He was arrested and charged with fraud related to an investment scheme for his inventions. The case was ultimately dismissed, but the stigma remains. This history makes governments and large corporations understandably cautious. Investing hundreds of millions into a technology from a controversial figure is a monumental risk. Yet, the potential reward is equally monumental. This is the high-stakes gamble Japan is reportedly considering. Let's delve deeper into what a successful deal could mean for Japan. If the technology is real and can be scaled, Japan would instantly become the world's energy leader. It wouldn't just lead the EV market, it would render the current concept of EVs obsolete. Japanese cars would be the only ones that never need charging. The economic value would be incalculable. The licensing rights alone would be worth trillions of dollars. Every other car manufacturer in the world would have to license the technology from Japan. It would create one of the most valuable intellectual property portfolios in history. On a geopolitical level, Japan's influence would soar. Nations dependent on oil exports would see their economies reshaped. Global power dynamics would shift away from the Middle East and towards Tokyo. Japan would achieve the energy independence it has craved for over a century. This isn't just about cars, it's about national power. But what if it's all a mirage? The risk for Japan is not just financial loss. It is the risk of a massive, global embarrassment. A country renowned for its meticulous quality control and engineering prowess being duped by a perpetual motion machine. Its credibility in high-tech sectors would suffer a severe blow. Competitors in the US, Europe, and China would pounce on the failure. The Japanese government and its corporate partners would become a cautionary tale. This is why the negotiations, if they are indeed happening, would be incredibly complex and secretive. They would involve layers of intense due diligence. Teams of top physicists and engineers would be tasked with validating the claims. The process would be slow, secret, and fraught with tension. Now, let's consider the perspective of Maxwell Chikambutso himself. Why would he choose to partner with Japan instead of another nation? Japan offers a unique combination of technological prowess, manufacturing capability, and global reach. A partnership with a Japanese consortium would provide instant legitimacy. It would silence many of the skeptics, at least temporarily. Furthermore, Japan has a history of embracing and perfecting foreign inventions. Think of how Japanese companies took American electronics and automotive ideas and refined them into world-beating products. Chikambutso may see Japan as the ideal partner to bring his vision to life at a global scale. 
It's also possible that other countries, wary of the scientific controversy, have been unwilling to take the risk. Japan's unique desperation has made it the only serious suitor. The story of Maxwell Chikambutso and Japan is a modern-day drama that touches on our deepest hopes and fears about the future. It is a story about the enduring allure of a free energy dream. For centuries, inventors have claimed to have cracked the code. They have promised devices that defy the laws of thermodynamics. None have ever stood up to scrutiny. This history makes it easy to dismiss Chikambutso as just another charlatan. But what if, this one time, it's different? What if there is a kernel of truth in his inventions that conventional science has missed? Perhaps his system doesn't create energy, but harvests it from a source we haven't considered. Some have speculated about zero-point energy or tapping into the Earth's magnetic field. These are all fringe concepts, but the history of science is full of ideas that were once considered fringe. The pursuit of the impossible has often led to monumental discoveries. The world is watching this potential partnership with bated breath. The implications extend far beyond Japan or Zimbabwe. A successful RF-powered vehicle would be one of the most transformative inventions since the internal combustion engine. It would revolutionize transportation. It would dismantle the entire fossil fuel industry. It would dramatically reduce pollution and carbon emissions. It would bring electricity to remote, off-grid communities. The promise is nothing short of a utopian energy future. This is the dream that Japan is so desperate to believe in. It is a dream powerful enough to make a nation of skeptics take a chance on the impossible. In the end, the saga of Japan and Maxwell Chikambutso is a powerful reminder. It shows that even in our advanced technological age, we are still captivated by the promise of a miracle. It highlights the immense pressure on nations to secure a sustainable and independent energy supply. And it underscores the fine line between visionary genius and audacious folly. Only time, and hopefully transparent verification, will reveal the true nature of this technology. Until then, it remains one of the most fascinating and potentially world-changing stories of our time. A story of a desperate nation. A story of a controversial inventor. And a story of a car that, if the claims are true, will change everything we know about energy and motion.